जय श्री माता जी लेट एस ऑल बाउ डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडलिनी गुड बंधन गणेश मंत्र Now listen to Shri Mataji's speech. Do not allow your attention to get involved into something too much. Even rituals of anything. Say now we have not washed Mataji's feet. All right, doesn't matter. You love me, all right. If some mistakes are committed, what does it matter? If you see on the abstract plane. It's love. This is just a step forward. Like somebody ran very fast and fell down before reaching me. Say, mother, sorry, I fell down before reaching you. I should not have done that. But see how I prostrated before you. is complete poetry detachment so one has to develop that attachment detachment to be a guru and that detachment doesn't mean sanyas or anything like that yes sometimes one has to wear those dresses to announce because if you have to do lot of work in a short time 
that you have to take such intensive behavior. Like Christ, we can say, Adi Shankaracharya. All these people had a very, very short life. And in that short life, they had to achieve such a tremendous task that they had to actually take a military uniform. just to avoid problems, not to impress others. Nowadays people wear that dress just to impress others that they are detached and do just the thing opposite of it. So we understand that first one is not to harm anyone, ahimsa, not to kill anyone. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't eat meat and fish and all that, that's all nonsense. Of course, I mean, you should not hanker after food, no doubt about it. You don't kill anyone, means you do not kill a human being. Thou shalt not kill. Just move forward so that they can sit there, little. Come forward. I think best thing is to come very forward. So first thing is not to harm anyone. Second is to know that you have found the truth and give the testimony of the truth. Third is the detachment, the way I have told you about detachment. Not to get attached to any one person because he is a relation or something, but develop a universal feeling and also not to hate anyone. That is even worse. That's a kind of a worse type of attachment. This word should go away from the mouth of all the Sahaja Yogis, I hate. It's called as a dandak, is the statute. You cannot hate anyone. Even Rakshasas, you better not hate, hate them, give them a chance. Now the fourth thing, the fourth statute of the Lord is to lead a moral life. These statutes were given by all the gurus. Take them from Socrates onward, Moses, Abraham, Dattatreya, Janaka, up to, say, Nanaka, Muhammad Sahib, and take up to the point where it was only about a hundred years back, you can say at the most, was Saina. All of them have said that you have to lead a moral life. None of them have said that you do not get married, that you do not talk to your wife, that you have no relationship with your wife. All this is nonsense. Lead a moral life. When you are young, not married. Keep your eyes on the ground. Mother Earth gives you that innocence by which you develop that principle within you. It's a very important principle. It's such a pure principle, it really helps the society to develop its dignity. Now think in a society where you do not know who is your sister, who is your brother, who is your mother, what complications it can be. What confusion, what unhappiness. It is one of the most essential
essential things for human beings to be moral. For animals it is not necessary. Most of the confusions and problems, especially in the Western life, have come because they have thrown morality in the sea. And to accept morality as the very basis of society is very difficult for them. It's a complete reversion. But you have to do it. You have to turn the whole wheel back. So many things were done in the beginning of the society to establish this pure relationship. There are laws which act, as there are laws of chemical laws are there, there are physical laws are there. In physics and chemistry, read, there are human laws which one should understand. The relationships between each other, the sublimity of their relationship, the purity of their relationship must be understood. And then only you can have a very, very happy married life, which is the basis. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But Christ has said, perhaps He knew the modern people as they would be using their brains for this, He said, Thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. What a vision in those days to think. I mean, even I could not understand it when I was in India. After only coming here, I could see that what did it mean. It's a possession on the eyes, possession. It's a joyless, useless, behavior. It's tiring. Attention is frittered away completely. There's no dignity. I should be steady. When you look at somebody steadily, you should know that you have got Sergio by you with love, with respect, with dignity, not staring at people and just playing into the hands of these possessions. The whole society is exist. All the satanic forces have been let loose, I think, and the way people are possessed, they cannot see through these things. And they are supposed to be Christians. Attention is to be looked after. That's the most important thing, because attention is the one which is going to be enlightened. So we have to know what morality is. Let people laugh at us. Let them say that these are goody goodies or this sort of thing. We are. We are proud of it. We are not ashamed of being righteous people. This is a very important part of righteousness. Those who do not follow this will lose their vibrations very fast. Then for a guru, he should not accumulate things. He should not have possessions, much possessions with him. If he has possessions, they should be just for giving away. A guru must give away his possessions. He should not have stamp collection, and all kinds of collections that people go on, whatever things are useful, beautiful, which give happiness and joy to others, to their eyes. Such things must be 
collected. Such things which give the symbol to his life, very symbolic things he should have, which suggests that he is a dharmic person. He should not have things which are symbolic of adharmita, of irreligious life. Everything that he has or he wears or he shows should be representative of his dharmita. I don't know, but I don't know what was the situation here, but in India, when we were young, we were not allowed to listen to all kinds of music, not allowed, just not allowed, not to see all kinds of filthy things and filthy documentaries and things, not allowed. Anything that is impure, giving bad vibrations, should not be possessed. And even whatever you have, you should think, whom can you give this? So it means you should have possessions to express your generosity. Such yogi has to be generous like the sea. A miserly Sahaja yogi, I cannot think of that. It is like mixing up darkness with light. Miserliness is not allowed in such a Anybody whose mind goes, how much I can save money or save my labor, how there are many labor-saving devices also and money-saving devices or cheating others or making money out of certain few things here and there, all such things are against Sahaja Yoga. They will pull you down. Enjoy your generosity. How many times I must have told you about generosity? I remember once I wanted to give a sari that I had from uh, abroad. You see, because in India people like that kind of a sari very much. No, I mean, I don't understand why they like it, nylon sort, something. And a lady said that I haven't got any sari from outside and I would like to have an imported sari. And I had only one left with me because I am quite good at giving away. So I told one of my niece-in-laws, I said, I want to give away this sari to her. On a holy day we can give it to elders, so I'll give it. She said, you have only one left now, why do you want to give away? You have given away all that you had. I said, now I feel like giving, I'll give away. And we were discussing this in the kitchen, you see. But I said, why do you tell me? I'm not going to take your advice on this point. And at that time the bell rang up and a gentleman came. He had brought three saris for me from Africa. And one of them was exactly the same, the one I had. Because I had given some silk saris to this lady, when she was going to Africa, she thought she should send me some sari, so she sent me. You are just standing in the center, from one door it comes and the other door it goes. It's nice to see all that movement. It's very interesting. Apart from that, the way you give it, you see, the emotional side of it is so beautiful you can't it. I met a lady after, say, twenty years of her married life in London suddenly. And she said, Oh, what a coincidence. I said, Why? You see, I am wearing the same pearl necklace you had given me on my wedding day today and I should meet you. I mean, the whole thing, the whole drama changed, you know, that meeting. I mean, it was nothing, nothing so great. It is how you give even a small thing is the greatest art of giving one has to learn in Sahaja Yoga. Give up the mundane type of things, see. 
like if you go to somebody's birthday, you send a card, thank you very much. Make it a more deeper, significant thing. Let us see how you develop your symbols of love. And when you'll have these things of vibrations, and then you'll give it to a Sahajogi, you will know what it is. Never lack in generosity, especially among Sahajogis. Gradually you'll be amazed how through small things you win over, as if the vibrations flow through those things and work out on those people. Then for a Sahajogi, it is important to use things which are more natural in their character, to give up artificialities, to be more natural. I don't say that you go and take the roots and eat them or you can eat the fish raw. I don't mean that. When going too far with things, always I must have, you must avoid. But try to lead a life which is more natural. Natural in the sense that people know that there is no vanity about you. Or some people can be other way round, you see. They will dress up like a tramp just to attract more attention. I mean, they can both ways, you see. When I find some of the people, you see, coloring their hair and all that, who is there? Let them come. Huh? What is it? I didn't follow. Oh, I see. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. <coughs> Put your attention here. Everything will work out. So you have to be natural person, very natural in your behavior. It can mean anything absurd also to some people who do not use their wisdom. Wisdom is very important in Sahaja Yoga, that one has to keep intact all the time. Natural means you must wear natural dresses which are suitable to you. For example, in this climate, there is no need for you to wear a dress like Rama used to wear. He would not wear anything on top, you see. There is no need. You have to wear the dress whatever country you belong, whatever suits for the occasion, whatever you think is dignified and good, which speaks for your more elegance and your personality, whatever suits you, you should wear. Not like all the people wearing that uh, Moss Brothers dress in the grey suit, a horrible looking and absolutely making clowns out of them. No clownish things are necessary. No dandy stuff is necessary. Simple. Beautiful dresses should be worn, which give you dignity. Actually, in the East, people believe that God has given you a beautiful body, and it is to be adorned with the beauty of what human beings have created, just to respect it, just to worship your body. For example, now in India, people wear, women wear their saris. The saris are expressive of their moods of these women, and 
of uh, expression of their uh, worship of their body, because you must respect your body. Dresses should be such that should be for utility as well as dignity. There is no need to have uniform clothes for Sahaja Yoga at all. This is, I do not like it. There should be variety, as the nature is. Every should, one should look a different person. For a puja and all that, you may wear something similar, doesn't matter. Where your attention need not be on the variety, but outside you should be a normal person. You are all householders. Nobody has to announce something. Even you people, I do not tell you that you turn your red mark while walking on the street, because you should be like normal people, not to be pointed out.
महामंत्रस Thank you, Shamata Ji, for these blessings. Let us all bow down to Shamata Ji, raise our Mother Kundalini, and put Bandhan.
we will continue with our morning meditation tomorrow morning same time jai shri mata ji